Let's just read verse 1 just real quick. This is in the Garden of Eden. Verse 1. And it says, and now the serpent, right? Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God, right, that Yahweh God had made. The serpent, right, the snake. Serpent is a snake. Serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that Yahweh God had made, right? So the word for serpent, right, we got to bring up a Hebrew word. Like we do every week, right? The word for serpent looks like this. Right, I got to show you what it looks like because it's important, right? It's nachash, right? Nachash. Nachash. It's in ch. And then nachash. Nachash. Because it reads right to left. Nachash. Right? Nachash. That's the word for, the word for nachash. serpent. Serpiente. Right? Just nachash. Read, que right, quiere decir serpiente en hebreo. Right to left. All right. Nachash. Those are just consonants, right? Nachash. Okay. That's the word for serpent, right? Just keep that in mind. Now let's go down to verse 14. Ahora vamos al capítulo, I'm sorry, mismo capítulo, pero verso 14. All right, and so the story is, right, that God tells them that they can eat of all the trees in Eden except for one tree, and it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? And so they're like, okay, bet. All right, and then so the serpent, right, the Nachash, right, he comes and he tempts Eve. And he says, you know why God doesn't want you to eat from that tree, right? He says, because he knows when you eat of it, you're going to become like gods, right? Like Elohim. Knowing good and evil. And so Eve looks at it and she's like, well, it looks good. The fruit looks good. And so she eats it and she gives it to her husband. And he eats it too. Right? And then God confronts them. It says God is walking around in the garden Adam is hiding right and then God goes to him and he says why, why are you hiding and he, he says, says ¿Por qué te escondes, Adán? he says oh I'm sorry I, I heard you and I was afraid because I was naked and remember before this they were all naked pero estaba desnudo. they were naked before this and God said who told you han estado desnudo? who told you that you were naked he knew something was up right and then what what Adam says, right, because God confronts him and he's like, so did you eat of the tree that I told you not to eat from? And Adam says, it was my wife, it was her, it was Eve. Era mi esposa, ella lo hizo. Right, it was the woman and he even blames God that you gave me, God. Que tú me the woman that you Dios. gave me. La mujer she, que tú me she gave me the fruit, ella that's why I ate it. Right, and so God goes to the woman, is this true, why have you done this? And Eve says, it was the serpent, he deceived me, Entonces, and I ate it. And so verse 14, God goes to the serpent now. To the nachash. And, right, and this is the, the curse that he es la maldición que le dio. gives to the serpent. This whole sermon is based off of these verses right here. So, Todo en right. Estos versículos. But look, this is so important. Like, Muy importante. Right, but it says, and the Lord God, right, Yahweh God said to the serpent. This is the curse to the serpent. Look what it says. Maldiciendo al serpiente. Because you have done this, right? Mm -hmm. Cursed are you above all livestock. Out of all the animals, you are the most cursed. Above all the beasts of the field. And look what he says. He says, on your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life, right? This is a humiliating thing. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat, right? Remember that, though. Dust you shall eat. Is, you're going to eat dirt. Dust is dirt. You're going to eat dirt. La tierra. Verse 15, and he says, right, this is the most important thing. <laughs> I will put enmity between you, serpent, and the woman, mm -hmm. right? Beef. Y'all going to have beef. Y'all going to have this, this. Y'all going to be enemies. Y'all are going to be enemies, right? You serán. and the woman. And he says, between your offspring is what it says in ESV. In Hebrew, the word is seed. Between your seed and yeah, her seed. Your seed and her seed. They're going to have, right, this beef. Gonna have this, they're going to be enemies. And it says, he shall bruise your head, but you shall bruise his heel. Right? What the heck does that mean? Right? ¿Qué decir eso? So, what he's saying is, her, her seed, there's a coming seed, there's a future altercation, right, between your seed and her seed, right? He's talking to the serpent. Right, the seed of the woman and the seed of, of the serpent. They're going to clash in the future. It, and what God is telling the serpent is that, right, y'all are going to hit each other at the same time. He says the seed of the serpent or serpent, you're going to strike his heel, but he's going to strike you in your head. 
You're going to strike his heel, he's going to strike your head. So who's losing that battle, right, when they both hit each other, right? They're throwing a punch at the same time. They're both getting hit, but one of them's getting hit in the head, and it's the serpent, right? He's losing. Right, do y'all see that, right? There's a coming fight, right? Coming, but the, the, the seed of the serpent's going to get hit in the head, right? And he's going to... He's going to hit the heel of the seed of the woman, right? Okay, so now... Right, let's go down to 1 Samuel 17. Just keep that in mind. 1 right? Samuel, capítulo 17. 1 Samuel 17. This is King David. This is David and Goliath. There's a very Ahora popular... Ahora mi hermano con David y Goliath. All right. David and Goliath. All right, I'm reading all this for a reason. This is... Estoy leyendo You'll por see. una razón. You'll see real quick. Van a ver rápido. All right, David and Goliath. All right, so this is, all right, King David. Right, before he's actually king, he's a little kid at this time. There's, de que es rey, hermano, no más un joven. There's a war between Israel and Philistia, right? The Philistines. Guerrero, mi hermano, es batalla sobre Filisteo y los israelitas. Let's read the setting, right? The setting is verse 3. Verse 3. 1 Samuel 17, verse 3. It says, And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, and there is a valley between them, right? And it says, verse 4, There came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, right? It's a very popular story, whose height was six cubits and a span. Real tall, he was a giant, right? Nine was, feet, nine inches, exactly. Right, yeah. That's what six cubits nueve and a span is. Como nueve inches. Right. But the, the, what the setting is that they send their champion down to fight. And this is a lot of... This is how a lot of ancient battles took place. Instead of everybody just going all out, full armies, going and clashing, they would send just their champion and champion for each. And the loser would serve the other. Right? And so that's what's going on here. They're not just going all out. They're sending their best fighter, which is Goliath, and now Israel's supposed to send their best fighter. But, it, but everybody knows about Goliath, right? He's intimidating. He's huge, and Israel's, all of Israel's afraid. Right, and so that's the setting, right? Uh, Goliath goes out, and he's taunting Israel, right? Right, but let's read, look, watch this, right, verse 5. All right, stay with me, right, you ready? This is how it describes Goliath, right? He's very tall, we already read that. Verse 5, though, it says, and he had a helmet of bronze on his head. He has a helmet of what? Right? Bronze. Bronze, bronze brass, copper, same thing, right? The word for bronze, right? Ready? The word for bronze is nachoshet, right? It's pretty much that with the, at the end, with the tuh. Nahashel. Right, that's the word for bronze. Quiere decir bronce. Right. This is no accident, right? Esto no es accidente. When you're reading in Hebrew, right, this is no accident, right? Cuando lo en hebreo, no es accidente en hebreo. What does that mean? What am I saying? Let's ¿Qué just, quiere decir esto? Just keep going. Just read, Vamos right? Leer. And it says, and he was armed with a coat of Male is what it says in English, right? Armed with a coat of mail, like mail link armor, chain armor, whatever it may be. With a coat of mail. The word in Hebrew is literally scales, right? He's wearing scale armor. Scale armor, like a fish. Or like, or like a reptile, right? right but let's just keep reading, right? You're, you're going to see. All right. Browns, nechoshet, all right, head, helmet, coat of, of scales. Let's keep going. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels, heavy, right? He wasn't just a tall, pesado. he wasn't tall and lanky and skinny. No, no, he was big, right? He was strong. He was swole, right? But his, his armor was what? It was bronze. It was bronze. Bronze here, bronze here. And verse 6, and it says, look, and he had bronze, again, Bronze, bronze, armor on his legs, and the javelin of what? Bronze, bronze, or brass, right, slung between his shoulders, right? And the shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam. His spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and his shield bearer went before him. What am I saying with all this, right? Why is the Bible telling you over and over again, right? He's wearing bronze here, bronze here, bronze here. Right. Why is he coated in, in scales? Right. 
It's because it's depicting him, and this is not what I think. It's depicting him as a serpent. Como un serpiente. Do y'all see that? Wow. Right? It's depicting him like a serpent, Como right? Serpiente. The word for it's, it's literally related nahash. to the word nahash, right? Nahash. He's, he's, he's quoted from head to toe in es the choshe. When you're reading in Hebrew, you're reading serpent. Serpent. You're reading serpent head, serpent, serpent, literally scale armor, right? Just like a a, a, a snake, right? Como Snakes un, have scales. From head to toe, he looks like a serpent. That's how the he, David's not fighting the lizard man on Spider Man. No, of course he's fighting a real man, right? But just like how he's describing him, right? He's making a connection to Genesis chapter 3. No action. I'm not making this up. This is, no well, diciendo, this is well known in biblical scholarship, right? I'm going to show you. But we're not done, right? There's still more. No right? But just know that he's depicted as a serpent, right? He looks like a serpent when you look at him. Right? So what happens is he goes and he goes down, he's taunting Israel. And are y'all afraid? Nobody's coming out to fight me? David, he's not even a, a warrior. He's not even in the army. He's too young. He's a, little, he's a kid. Right? And he goes because his dad tells him to go take food to his brothers. His, brothers are, his older brothers are in the army, right? Taking food to his brothers and he sees what's going on. He says, who's that guy, right? He, he says, who's this guy defying the armies of Israel, the armies of the living God? Right, and he says, who's this uncircumcised Philistine? Why are y'all afraid of this dude? Right, and then look what, let's go to verse, let's see, verse 31. He's a, why is everybody afraid of this guy? Right, he's a little kid, it's not some grown man. He's a little shepherd boy, that's what, Je er, that's what David was, a little shepherd boy, he just took care of sheep. But it says, verse 31, when the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul, and they sent for him. Right? Saul is the king of Israel. Verse 32, and it looked, it says, and David said to Saul, hey, let no man's heart fall because of him. Your servant, me, he says, I yeah. will go out and fight with amen, this Philistine. Amen. Right? Yeah. That's how David talks. Verse 33, and he says, and Saul said to David, no, you are not about to go. He says, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth. You're a kid, and he has been a man of war from his youth. You're a kid. He's been fighting since he was a kid. I'm not about to let you go. You're just a kid, David. Verse 34, but David said to the king, King Saul, hey, no, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, Right From my flock, verse 35, he says, I went after him, and I struck him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, David said, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Right? He's saying, I can go fight this dude. I fought bears and lions. Right, And when yo they took my pelear, sheep, he says, and when they took my sheep, I chased after them, and I killed them. Right? And if, <laughs> right? David, man, he's bold. <laughs> And he said, he says, if they came at me, I grabbed them by the beard and I killed them myself. That's how they Man, he's a kid. <laughs> right, and then he says, verse 36, your servant has struck down both lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. He's, he's going to be no different, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. For he has defied the armies of the living God. David's looking at it. He didn't, he didn't just offend me. No, he talked. Against my God, right? Está provocando Israel y contra mi Dios. In verse 37, and David said, Yahweh, right, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And, and Saul said to David, all right, go, but Amen. Yahweh be with you, is what he said. Amen. Amen. Good luck, boys, is what he said. God bless you, hope, God help you, right? And so, but look, this is interesting, because look what happens, right? Verse 38. Muy interesante, 38. It says, then Saul, right? Because remember, the Bible says Saul was head and shoulders above the rest of Israel. He was tall. He was a big dude. Que Saul está bien alto. And David's a kid, right? He tried to clothe David. It says he clothed David with his armor, right? Saul's a big dude. The armor's big on him. He put a helmet of, look, bronze on his head, and he clothed him with a coat of Scales. He tries to make David look like that. He tries to make David look like Goliath, right? Or like the serpent. And David is like, ah, this doesn't feel right. I haven't tested it. And so David takes off. He says, I don't, I don't need none of that. Right? 
And so let's just keep going, right? Vamos a seguir. Verse 40, it says, then he just took his staff in his hand. Because remember, he's a shepherd. He has a shepherd's staff. It says he took his staff in his hand and he chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand and he approached the Philistine, right? So then they, he comes out, right, to fight, to the valley, right? And it says he has a sling. And we always think of a sling as being like this type of sling, right? But it probably wasn't that. Probably, when it wasn't a slingshot, probably, right? Because there's something called a, a, was it a shepherd's sling, a staff sling, right? The sling on the end of a stick. That's probably what David has, right? It's probably a sling on the end of a stick because it's much more powerful. And, and, this and if you get good at it, it's deadly, right? That's just for y'all's mental picture when y'all imagine this fight. It was probably a staff sling because when he goes out, Goliath gets offended. He says, what the heck is this? Right? First of all, it's a little kid, right? But then he's not even dressed in any sort of armor. He's just, he says, he comes to me in sti with sticks. He says, he says, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? Right, so David went out, all he went out with was his staff. Todo lo que tiene su pastoril, su callado. David comes out to fight the battle looking like Moses, right, with just a staff, literally. Right? So that's what he has. It's probably a staff sling, right? But he has... Right, he's got the, the five smooth stones in his pouch. Right. And so because Goliath is offended, he says, what the heck, am I just a dog? You come to me with sticks? David says, look, you come to me with a spear, a sword, and a javelin. He says, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Right, is what he says. And Lord of hosts, right, the word for hosts is just the word for armies. He says, my God is the king of armies. I come to you in his name. <laughs> Right, but that's what he's saying. He's just, he's putting his, his, his trust in God. I come to you in the name of God. I don't need a sword, right, is what he's saying, right? And so they go, go to fight, right? Verse 48, let's read. All right, and David even says, you know, you know what I'm going to do, Goliath, right? He says, I'm going to, not only am I going to kill you, but I'm going to cut off your head. That's how he's talking, right? It's nothing but faith because, remember, he doesn't even have a no sword. Voy a matar nomás, pero te voy a mochar la cabeza. Right, and he says, I'm going to show you, everybody, right? Voy everybody's everybody's going to know that there's a God in Israel, right? Because what's about to happen. Amen. Verse 48, when the Philistine arose, right, so they went to fight, and he came and drew near to meet David, and it says, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. In verse 49, and David put his hand in his bag. He took a stone, right, put it in that little sling, and he slung it, right, and he struck the Philistine. Where did, where did he strike him, right? Was it in the chest? No, it was in the forehead, right? In the head. En la cabeza. And it says, and the stone stank, or sank into his forehead, and where did he fall, right? It says, and then he fell on his face to the ground, right? Cayó en su carra al piso. right? So this Goliath, right, he gets hit and he doesn't fall back, right? No se cae detrás. The Bible tells you this on purpose, right? La te dice sí he, fell. Es importante. he didn't fall back, he fell forward no on his cayó face. Pa atrás, cayó pa frente. It says face to the ground he fell. Su cara a la a la tierra. What did we just read, right? right what, is, what is Goliath depicted as? A serpent, right? What did, what did God tell the serpent in Genesis 3, 15? Right? 14 and 15. On your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat, right? The seed of the woman is going to crush your head, right? Wow. And so what's happening right here? Right? The seed of the woman, right? Hitting him, where? In his head. And where does he fall? On his face. En su cara. Right? And he eats dust. Y right? Y'all see what that's happening, Están right? Ahí lo que pasa. This is on purpose. This ain't no accident, no right? Es accidente. They're, they're hoping that you would see this, right? He eats dust just like Come the serpent. La and to top all of that off, right? Y para acabar con él, what is he? He's a giant. ¿Qué right? es un gigante? What were the giants? ¿De qué eran los gigantes? They were the children of the fallen angels and women. Los hijos de los ángeles que cayeron. Right, Goliath is literally a seed of the serpent. Es el right? serpiente de esos hermanos y men ángeles que of cayeron. The, of the fallen angels, right? And then so what happens is, right, verse 50. So David prevailed. He won over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone. And he struck the Philistine and killed him. And there was not even a sword in the hand of David. Right, verse 51, then David ran and he stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and he killed him and cut off his head with it, right? Just to top it all off, cut off his head with it. 
And when the Philistines, when they saw that their champion was dead, they ran away, they fled, they retreated. And so Israel comes and they plunder their camp, right? In verse 54, David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, and he put his armor in his tent, right? And that's that story, right? We're going to just stop there. But do you all see what was happening there, right? David, David is the seed of the woman crushing the head of the serpent. Now let's go. We're going to transition, right? We're going to go to the New Testament, right? Jesus. We're going to go to Jesus. All right, we're going to just read real quick from Matthew, I just want to read from Matthew 20. In Mateo 20. Just a few verses, right? Unas cuantas versículos. Matthew 20. Praise the Lord. Matthew 20, yeah. verse 20, right? This is the mother of the sons of Zebedee, which are James and John. La right? mujer de los, de los Zebedeo y Juan. Right, the mother of James and John comes, James and John, Jesus, comes to Jesus with a special request, right? Remember, James and John were a part of Jesus' inner circle, right? Jesus, que James y John son parte de los discípulos. Jesus had 12 disciples, right? Discípulos. But he also had an inner circle of three, which was Peter, James, and John. Pero, hermano, su tercer ciclo era Pedro, Juan, y Santiago. And so James and John are brothers, and here's their mom coming to Jesus with, a, su mamá a, a Jesús with a special request. Una petición especial. Verse 20, we're just going to read this Verso 20. real quick. And he says, then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him for something, right? I have a request, Jesus. He says, what do you want? And she said to him, say, these two sons of mine, right? She's asking, can one of them sit, look what she says, one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom, right? She knows you're the Messiah. You're going to set up a kingdom. She's saying when you are on your throne in your Pero kingdom, tú te en tu trono, can my sons James and John sit? One at your right hand and one at your left. Right? Mis hijos en un lado, derecha, y lo in verse 20, Jesus answers. He says, right, you do not know what you ask. You do not know what you're asking. No sabes lo que tú pides. And he says, are you able, are y'all able to drink the cup that I'm able, wow. or that I'm about to drink? Well, he, they have no idea that he's going to suffer and die, right? But when he says, are y'all able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink? He's saying, are y'all, y'all going to be able to suffer like I am? Right? Because there's a cost to that, what you're asking. And they said to him, we are able. And he, he said to them, all right, you're right, you will drink my cup. But to, he says, but to sit at my right hand and at my left? It's not mine to give. It's not mine to grant. But it is for those whom has been prepared, been prepared by my father. Only the father could choose who sits at my right hand and at my left in my kingdom. Right? Let's go to now to Matthew 27. Mateo 27. This is where Jesus is crucified and we're almost done. Right? Lo or at least reading. <laughs> Matthew 27, verse 32. Verso 32. This is where Jesus is crucified. Right? Donde Jesus es crucificado. It says, and as they went out, they found a man of Cyrene. Right? Simon by name, and they compelled this man to carry his cross, right? Jesus has carried the cross, this man helped. Verse 33, and when they came to a place, look what it says, called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, right? They offered him, or when they came to the place, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. They tried to offer him wine, Jesus would not drink it. Verse 35, and when they had crucified him, look what it says. It says, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. They said, oh, I want his robe. Give me his sash. Give me this, right? Just like in Psalm 22. Es el Salmo 22 donde estaban peleando por sus ropas? This whole section is the fulfillment of Haciendo Psalm. Haciendo juego con ellos como se cumplió la palabra. Of Psalm 22 and what happened to David, right? They're dividing garments, just like Psalm 22. That's why we read it. Verse 36. Then they sat down and they kept watch over him there. And it says, verse 37. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. They're mocking him. Oh, yeah, king of the Jews. They wrote it on the sign and put it, ha, this is the king of the Jews. Yeah, look at your king, right? Judea. Verse 38, and it says, and then the robber, then the two robbers were crucified with him, right? There were two robbers who were crucified him, one on the right hand and one on the left. Right? In verse 39, and those who passed by derided him. Look what this is, right? Wagging their heads. Just like in Psalm 22 where David said, all who see me mock me, and they wag their heads at me. And that's what, that's what, it's exactly what's happening to Jesus. They're seeing him, they're seeing him, they're like, ugh, they're just wagging their heads, right? Disgust. Like, like disappointment. In verse 40, and it says, and they said, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you were the son of God, come down from the cross then. 
Right? If you were so powerful, you healed all these people. Save yourself. Si tú eres un Dios, hermanos, amen. Bájate de esa cruz. Verse 41. So all the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, ha, he saved others, but he cannot even save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross, and then we will believe in him. Right? These are the religious leaders talking to Jesus. Esos right? son los líderes religiosos hablando. And Jesus is just quiet. Right? Jesucristo no más callado. Verse 43. He, and look, this is straight up like a Mira quote. Mira lo que dice aquí. Quoting Psalm 22, right? Diciendo Salmo 22. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him, right? It's the same thing that was said to David. Oh, he trusts in Yahweh. Let him deliver him. Así como le dijeron David, él confía en Dios, que Dios lo libere. That's what they're trusting. Que están diciendo or, lo mismo a él. They're telling Jesus. He trusts in God. Let him deliver him now. Man. If he desires him, if he even wants him, for he said he's the son of God, right? If he's truly the son of God, let, let God save him. Si era hijo de Dios, que Dios lo right. And now, I just want to, right, we read through that. Let's just real quick, let's look at verse 38. This is the picture, right, of Jesus being crucified, right? Here. There's Jesus in the middle, right, King Jesus. And who's with him, right? It's the robbers. ¿Quién está ahí? Los they're being crucified with him. But look, what it, Thank you, but look what it says. The ones who were crucified with him. These, these criminals, right? Estos criminales. It says there was one on the right una and one derecha, on the left. Una right. a la izquierda. Basically, it's like Matthew is saying, right? Como la petición que pide la mamá, hermano, de Juan y Santiago. It's that picture, just like the mother of James and John asked, right? Como ella le pide. And he said, you don't know what's... The, you don't know what you're asking to sit at my right hand and at my left, no right? Lo que tú pides estar a mi derecha, a mi it's like Matthew's intentionally painting this picture. Look, there's Como a que Mateo le está este foto. One at his right hand and one at his left. Una derecha, una izquierda. This is the cost. Este es el pago. Jesus said, you don't know este what you're precio. asking. No right? sabe lo que piden. You want to be seated with me, right, in the kingdom? Estar en el reino? That, that is what it looks like. Así se parece. You want to be seated with me at my right hand and at my left? All right, then get crucified then. Entonces, like crucifícate también tú. That's literally what it is. It takes... Es lo que literalmente se toma... Crucifixion. Crucificación. Right, right. crucifixion. All right, death. Death, muerte. That's what it is, right? Es lo que se lleva. Right, and we know we live in America today. We have freedom of religion. We're blessed that there's not... Nosotros estamos bendecidos que tenemos la libertad de religión de servir a Dios. That we're not literally being crucified for our faith today, no, right? No, no están crucificando para servir a Dios. But we can all say, right, we want to be seated with Jesus, right? Pero todos queremos decir, yo quiero estar sentado con Jesús. We want to sit with him in the kingdom, quiero right? Quiero vivir con él, hermanos, en su reino. What does it take? Pero que se lleva. It takes crucifixion. Se lleva crucificación y muerte. Even if we're not literally dying for our faith it takes crucifixion of the flesh putting to death right that, that flesh Pero in poniendo you. Por muerte, hermanos, la carne. it takes obedience Se lleva obediencia. right y'all think Jesus wanted to be crucified ¿Tú crees que Jesucristo quería ser crucificado? no, no. In, in the garden he's literally saying father right en la if, diciendo, Padre. if there's any other way please let this cup pass from me Right. But, then he, but then he submits and he says, but, right, Pero, not my will, but Father, yours be done. No mi voluntad, sino la tuya. Right, it takes obedience. The Bible says, Se in, we read this on Tuesday, Philippians 2, right? Dos, it says Jesus was obedient, Jesucristo right? Fue obediente, Even unto death and death la on muerte, la muerte de la cruz. Right, God is Right, calling us to crucify our Porque flesh. Dios nos lleva a hermanos a crucificar la carne. To be obedient even unto death. Según a la muerte. Right, do y'all think it's easy being obedient? Creen hermano que es fácil ser obediente? Do y'all think when God speaks to you, He's gonna tell you that, hey, go do this, and you think you're gonna want to do it? Y de volar que Dios te diga algo que vos lo vas a querer hacer? No. No. What? Well, God. Well, God tells you, you are not going to want to do it. Te dice, no vas a Be ir. Because it's hard, right? Está duro. When God tells you, hey, cut off that girl, right? Or, Dios te dice, cut off that guy. Esa relación. Leave that job, right? Deja este trabajo. But God, this is, I'm, I'm comfortable. It's going pues, to it's it's be hard. It's going to hurt. I don't want to do that. Va a estar duro. You got to be obedient. Pero que ser it's not about you. It's not no about what you want. No es lo que tú right? You are called to be obedient. Hemos right? sido a ser right? Even if you don't want to. That's the Aunque point. No Jesus didn't want to go to the cross. Jesucristo no quería la cruz. But he said, Father, not my will. Padre, no mi voluntad. But yours be done in this the same with us. Right? We have to be obedient to God, right? Especially in those times. Because, tenemos que ser a Dios, right? because we got to pray, God, God your will be done, not mine. Right? Not mine. 
And I'm telling y'all this, tell this because I'm speaking, I'm preaching to myself right now, right? Because this week I've been struggling so hard Porque with surrendering things to God, literally. A a Dios, I feel like I have a lot of things surrendered to God, but there's some areas where God is surrendered. Ahora Dios Surrender, está tratando conmigo. Ríndate, ríndate. Give it up. Right? You give it up, and it's like my, I'm, 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 I've been fighting with God this week. Saying, no, like no, God, I got. It's hard, right? But you have to be obedient. Right? You have to cut those things off. You have to be. You have to do what God calls you to do, right? It takes. It, you have to be obedient. That's why, that's why I'm preaching this. I'm preaching to myself in this moment. But it's hard, right? It's not going to be what you want, right? But it's for a reason. It's Pero God's will be done, razón. not mine, right? And so in that, Su voluntad, no la mía. I've been surrendering to God in us. Y vamos a rendirnos. Right, and I hope that y'all can too, right? If y'all y ojalá take que that también message. Ustedes puedan. Right, but now let's just read uh, verse 33, right? We just vamos read. A ver 33. Look, look where Jesus is crucified. Mira on donde this, is, es this is told to you for a reason. Esto not, es por una razón que te dice. Right, it says, when they came to a place called where is he crucified? Al lugar de la calavera. Golgotha. Right? Golgotha, which means what? Place of a skull. Lugar de la calavera. Right outside of Jerusalem, right? This is where Jesus is crucified. Place of a skull. I lugar believe de la calavera. that's told to you on purpose, right? Because this is where Jesus crushes the head of the serpent. That's what I have drawn here. A foot es lo on que tengo aquí. Oh, sí, el sandalia yeah. It's, no, a, it's, it's a foot on a snake's head, right? Because this is where Jesus was crucified, at Golgotha, which literally means a place of a skull. This is where he crushes, right? The head of the serpent. This is where Jesus had victory. Over who? Not over any man, not over Rome, no hombre, not over the Pharisees, no fariseo, over Satan, pero sobre Satanás, his demons, right? Y demonios. And and the serpent, right? Revelation 12 literally says the serpent is the devil, right? That, it says that Asian serpent is Satan. It's at this place, at the cross, this is where Jesus crushes the head of that serpent, right? That Genesis 3.15 is a prophecy and Jesus fulfilled it fully. Because remember, that verse said, right, they're going to they're gonna have this clash. Right? The, the serpent's gonna gonna bruise the heel of the woman seed, right? But he's gonna crush the head, right? And in the same way, right? Jesus is he got killed, right? Ahora como Jesús, hermano, lo matan. But it is where he crushes the head. Pero es aquí en donde él le pide la cabeza, le pisa. It is because of the crucifixion that we have victory. Y por la crucifixión que nosotros tenemos la victoria. That our sins are forgiven. Que nuestros pecados son perdonados. Jesus became sin for us. Jesucristo se hizo pecado por nosotros. He bore our sins. Él tomó nuestro pecado. He had victory over Satan. Y él tenía victoria sobre Satanás y su demonio. I want to read real quick from 1 Corinthians 2, and then I'm done. Primera but look what it says in 1 Corinthians 2. It's real quick, look, verse 7. Verso siete. Paul is saying, look, we have a secret and hidden wisdom of God. Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 2. We have a secret and hidden wisdom of God, and I'm going to tell you it right now. Which God decreed before the ages for our glory. God had this plan, and he's talking about Jesus' crucifixion. God knew this plan all along from the beginning of time. Dios había el plan desde el principio del tiempo. Look what he says, verse 8, right here. Verso ocho. He says, none of the rulers of this age understood this. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Right? For none of the rulers of this age. He's not talking about any man, any government. Not talking about Rome. No está de hombre, ni gobierno, ni Roma. By rulers of this age, he means Satan and his Pero demons. De y sus He's talking about the principalities, Los spiritual rulers. He said they didn't understand this. They didn't, no they didn't know that the Messiah had to come and die. No se que el tiene que venir a morir al mundo. Look what he says. If they did, si lo sabido, if they knew this mystery, this plan, si este misterio, este plan, they wouldn't have crucified no Jesus. Lo because it is by the crucifixion that we are Porque saved. Por la right. hermano, que somos 
salvos. So what he's saying is Satan had no idea that Jesus was going to resurrect. Satanás no tiene ninguna hermano se me idea que Jesús iba a resucitar. When Satan killed Jesus through people, right? Using Cuando people, hermano se me murió. To kill Jesus, they thought they were winning. Pensaba que ellos estaban ganando. Or else they would never have killed him. O right? no lo habían hecho. They thought they were winning. You could imagine when Jesus finally dies and he's and he's pierced, right? And they're just checking. Imagínense like, que cuando le dieron el mano en la lanza. You can imagine Satan his demons thinking like. That's it? Like, we, Ahora, we won? Satanás, the, uh, ya, ya, ya ganamos. That, that's it? It was that easy, Esto, right? Tan fácil. He didn't even put up a fight, right? Ni, ni luchó. Something is off. Something is up, right? Algo está pasando aquí. But he's dead. We, we won, right? Pues ya, ya murió. Ya they, ganamos. They thought they were winning. Ellos pensaron que habían ganado. They didn't realize that that's where they were losing. Pero no se dieron cuenta right? que es ahí donde estaban perdiendo. And that's what that is saying. They didn't know. They no didn't sabían. Know. It was when he resurrected, they were, they were like, oh my gosh. Of es cuando mi hermano resurrected. We've been hoodwinked, right? Yeah, nos ganó. We've been duped. That's what it is, right? It's a victory, everybody. He Come got on. It. it was the resurrection, La right? Resurrección. Because we know the same spirit that resurrected Jesus, Porque right? El mismo espíritu que resucitó a Jesucristo. That brought life to Jesus' body, right? Que le dio vida al cuerpo de Jesús. Lives in us. Vive en nosotros. And at the resurrection, he will lift us up too. We will resurrect just like Jesus. Y en la resurrección like también nosotros resucitaremos. Right. All this happened at the cross. That's where our victory Todo is. Todo pasó en la cruz y allí está nuestra victoria. Not even Satan and his demons knew. Ni Satanás y sus diablos. Because Paul says if they did, they would not have done that. No lo sabían porque si lo habían sido, no lo habían hecho. Right, and then look at it says, verse 9. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor the heart of man even imagined, even conceived. Nobody's even ever thought Nadie lo pensó. what God has prepared for those que who love him. Para que le aman. We always use that to talk about heaven, but Paul is using that to talk about the crucifixion, right? Amen. The gospel, right? Nobody could have ever thought that the Messiah would have to come and die for the sins of the world. It was like it was hidden within the scriptures, right? Eran es, hermano, misterio, and that's what Paul was saying. But that's what we're revealing to you, right? Pero que estamos revelándole a vosotros the gospel was a mystery El Evangelio but now it's been revealed nobody would have ever guessed right? but, Nadie it, was, but it was God's plan all of along, all along. De Dios. and it was concealed right? not even Satan and his demons understood right? dice, demonios, hermano, but that is our victory and because y of that la que tenemos, we also have victory over the serpent right? victoria, hermanos, al it says in the Bible Jesus tells them uh, with the disciples in Luke 10 I give you power to Jesús tread le dice a un, hermanos, a los y aquí le doy poder y potestad sobre todo serpiente he says to tread on serpents and scorpions, right? Mi hermano, serpientes, right? He's given us the power over evil, over sobre Satan todo and enemigo, mi hermano, dio poder. Right? That's why when we talk about right, casting out demons and all that, y por eso hablamos de esa, hermano, we, reprender y sacar demonios. We have no authority in and of ourselves. Nosotros no tenemos ninguna autoridad de nosotros mismos. But we come in the name of Jesus. Pero cuando venimos right? en el nombre de Jesucristo. David came in the name of Yahweh to fight his es, battles, right? David fue en el nombre de Yahweh de Jesús. We come in the name of right. Jesus, right? Nos solo venemos en nombre de Jesús. Same God. We come in the name of Jesus. El mismo Dios. He gives us that authority and that power. Él nos dio autoridad. To tread on serpents. Para pisarle la cabeza al serpiente, escorpiones, sobre todo enemigo. With that, I just want to. Nada, hermano, nos hará daño. I want to pray and then. Y con eso vamos a orar. We have altar call or whatever. Vamos a tener llamado a hermanos al altar. If y'all just pray with me though. Pero quiero que todos oren conmigo, por favor. Right, so, Father God, thank you, Lord, for bringing us here, God, on this resurrection day, God. We're thankful for what you did, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, Jesus, Father, for, for, for what you've done. And, and Father God, for, for your will and your, your plan being brought about. Jesus, for your obedience, Father, or, or, or to, to even death and death on the cross. God, we come to you right now, God, and we surrender, God. And I, I, I preach this, God, because that's something that I'm struggling with. And I know I'm not the only one, God, but we, Lord, as a church, God, we surrender to you fully, Lord. We surrender to you, God, even, God, if it hurts, even if it's hard, God, we surrender to you, Lord, because we know, God, that you have our best intentions in mind, Father, God, because, Lord, your will be done. Not our will, but, God, yours be done. Give us the strength, God. Let your spirit work in us, God. Give us the, the strength to surrender, to submit to your will, just like Jesus did to surrender to your will, Father, God. We come to you, Lord, asking you to please move in our midst, God. Touch us, God. We thank you for what you did, Jesus. We're thankful for what you did on the cross and dying for our sins, bearing our iniquities. Lord, we thank you for the resurrection, Father, God, because because of you, Lord, we we can now, Lord, be in your presence like this. The veil has been torn, God. Your spirit is here, and now he lives within us. He, the Holy Glory. Spirit, lives within Glory us. So, Father God. God, we're thankful. We're going to give you praise, God. and we're going to give you thanks on this resurrection 
holy day, Lord. We're thankful, Lord. In Jesus' name that we pray, Lord. Amen.